Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. And now, here's your host, Clint Arthur. And now we are going to a very tall and beautiful doctor. Oh my God, with a beautiful name to boot. And she has come a long way to be here on The Greatest Show of All Time, Dr. Usha Mantha. Thank you so much for being on WABC Radio in New York City. Thank you, Clint, for inviting me to be here. Uh, 21 years ago, um, my parents called me to the living room and said, we have a boy for you to get married. And I said, do they know how tall I am? Because I did not want to be rejected because I was tall. I went to a nun's convent school. I was educated, and they always taught me to stand tall. My father said, it's okay. So the next day, we traveled from north of India to go to south, where the boy was. It happened uh, it was not a good day to see the boy, so the parents came to greet us at the train station. And my future in-laws took me to seven to eight temples and introduced me like she's the future daughter-in-law. And I kept asking my dad, Dad, this is not right. I haven't even met the boy yet. And my dad said, it's going to be all right. But I knew he was nervous himself. Next day, I meet the boy. He was tall, dark, handsome, educated. He was a physician. And I fell in love, and we had a fairy tale marriage. Then soon he said to me, we are going to England. And we did. But when we went to England, he started hanging out with friends, drinking, watching television, and failing every single exam. To the extent, third time I told him, I said, look, if you fail one more time, I'm going to leave you and go back to India. And I did. Because I was supporting him doing odd jobs. I was working in a factory and I was being a housemaid. I did everything to support him. Luckily, he did pass his exam and I came back to England. We did five to six years more and we got to the attendings jobs and he didn't get the job he wanted. Then he frustrated again and he said, we are moving to America. So I came to America. Here we came to Pennsylvania, we struggled, but we got through our residencies and we got a job and we bought a house. We bought our dream house, first house, on a farm. It was beautiful, lined with trees. I still have pictures. And um, he started changing. He started changing. He became more uh, irritating and depressed, sad, and he wasn't coming along. And sadly, in six months' time, he was diagnosed with stage four metastatic cancer of the lung with secondaries in his brain. And I came to realize he was sad, depressed because he had tumors in his brain. I'm a physician myself, and I've learned a lesson that I always scan my patients for any kind of tumors early in the phase of depression. He was given six months to live, and he lived for two and a half years. He was very strong. He had a willpower. He was a physician, he was a pediatrician, a neonatologist. By this time, I had two lovely boys, but the struggle continued. And then after six, he was given six months, he lived to two and a half years, and then he died. Once he passed away, I was sad for a long time. I felt sorry for myself first because I thought I lost my love of life. My kids didn't lose their father. And then I, it reali- I realized it wasn't my fa- loss, it was his loss. He struggled really, really hard to be a good pediatrician, and he was an amazing neonatologist. I remember him starting um, difficult lines on 23 weeks old babies. He was so good at his art. And then he was gone. He struggled, he struggled, he couldn't practice. He was four months away from his fellowship, finishing and getting an attendings job. Then life taught me that whenever there is depression, it's still a depression. It's, I, t- I, I tell my patients who are depressed that please embrace life, get it treated because you are still alive. You have a life and that is so more important. And um, it's better than not being there. And this is my message to my patients always that Embrace life, get treatment. Depression is not not treatable. It is a disease, it is a disorder, and there is so much more help. And uh, because I lost my husband in a very different way, I just want to bring this message to all my patients.
What are you doing these days? I am a physician. I am a family physician. I have practices that I treat my um, patients and I'm very close to my patients. And I also want to actually make women and men beautiful from inside and outside because I've worked with them for 30 years and I have now opened a medical spa and it's called Verve. Verve means beautiful and um, it's a very uh, nice place. So, What do you like the most about med spa? I feel that I have actually worked with women for so long. I want to make women confident from outside because women have to look good from outside as well as from inside. And when they lo look good, and aging is not optional, but aging beautifully and gracefully is. What's your favorite med spa procedure to give to women? I think um, injections, I know. <laughs> but it is enhancing. It, it makes you beautiful instantly. You do not fear. You should go to someone who knows what they're doing, and they do change your faces. And they make you more confident because aging is beautifully, gracefully is an option. How do people find out more about Dr. Usha? You can go to my web website. It's called www.vervemedspa.com -E -E and my phone number is 909-377-3949. Dr. Usha, thank you so much for being such a superstar guest on The Greatest Show of All Time right here on 77 WABC Radio in New York City.